a Buddhist Lama had been practicing in a calm scenic retreat away from people for several years. After achieving a very high state of consciousness and having many amazing experiences, he went to see his Guru. The Guru was joyful, grinned gently in encouragement and then instructed him to perform sadhana for another three months. The location would be somewhat different this time. A dark cave teeming with snakes, scorpions and other nocturnal creatures. Normal meals would not be accessible. The actual cave was situated far from civilization. The disciple arrived there and meditated. By nightfall, a powerful thunderstorm began and in the pitch black of the night, the wind began to make odd noises. The Lama was already having trouble concentrating. He occasionally felt odd animals scurrying across his body. He heard a nearby tiger's blood-curdling cry and a huge bolt of lightning struck the ground once. There it was. He dashed out of the cave and continued to run down the slope until he arrived at his guru's house, where he admitted that he was unable to go on. What one may experience or achieve in a comfortable environment may not be sufficient to withstand the psychological turbulence in an unstable atmosphere. A true renunciate is the one who remains composed under all circumstances and keeps his mind fixed on the goal. The path of Aghori develops from this idea and hence involves the most repulsive, impure and seemingly immoral acts amidst which the sadhak tries to become one with reality. The Sanskrit term aghor comes from adding the prefix a to ghor. A means negation and ghor meaning intense or deep. Aghor therefore symbolizes a style of life where a person of the aghori tradition doesn't have intense or deep feelings. It does not distinguish between various emotions and seems to be indifferent to the various stories of life. The aghoris are believed to be descended from earlier Shaivite ascetic orders. These ascetics considered themselves to be Shiva's cattle and believed Shiva would assist them in freeing themselves from the bondage of the earthly realm. Aghori is the one who follows the path of the Aghor, a path of evolution and spiritual realization that starts from the most animalistic, grossest aspects of the human being and stage after stage evolves into what can be called a liberated soul. They stand for the left-handed route to salvation or Vampanthi. The Dakshinpanthi or right-hand path is its opposite and comprises universal spiritual practices like meditation, prayer and bhakti that were taken from the early Vedic writings. The Vampanthi, on the other hand, stand for peculiar habits that are sometimes viewed by society as inappropriate and even immoral. Their ceremonies are frequently contrasted with Western occultism, cannibalism, sadhana utilizing human skull, animal sacrifices, alcoholism and sexual gratification are just a few of the eerie rites and behaviors that an Aghori sadhu is known for. These aspects also distinguish them from other Hindu sects. Because these sadhaks often do not care about anything but the ultimate, they are often disinclined to act as per the conventional spiritual role. In his book, Aghor at the Left Hand of God, Robert Svoboda mentions a description of a ghori as described by his guru, Vimalananda. An aghori is beyond the bound of the earthly shackles, something above the elements which shape the universe. He takes a sort of intoxicant and thus gets intoxicated in supreme love, which emanates from the innermost recesses of his heart. It is that which is beyond awareness. He gives off the best part of love, part of the supreme universal love where one experiences with the help of perception all in one and one in all. He merges with his own deity so that he becomes him. That is why he is said to have gone from darkness to divine enlightenment. This is an Aghori. Dattatre, a divinity represented as an ascetic with the three heads of Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva is believed to be the founder of Aghori tradition. He is shown together with four dogs that represent the four Vedas. 
he has in his hands some objects of spiritual meaning, Kamandal or the water pitcher, Japmala or the rosary, Damru or drums, Trishul or trident, Shankar or shell, and Sudarshan, the disc. Going by historical records, today's modified form of Aghori tradition can be traced to Kinaram, an ascetic who is said to have lived 150 years, dying during the second half of the 18th century. He is considered as an incarnation of Shiva, an embodiment of the philosophy and way of life. While undergoing severe sadhana in the Girnar mountains of Gujarat, he had a vision of Lord Dattatre and attained divine wisdom. Baba Kinaram established an ashram in Varanasi and spread the way of Aghor. He opposed the tyranny of local rulers and taught people to rise above caste, creed and sectarian views. A precise historical map of the Aghori sadhus is challenging to create. The scant information is derived from tales from the 18th century in Britain and sources from medieval Persia. In addition, their philosophy of life occasionally crosses over into other mystical systems borrowing some of their meditational practices and fusing them with others. Some Aghoris have also had gurus who practice Islam or other religions. Despite this, there have been times when this specific family of sadhus has been particularly numerous, representing an old custom. Irrespective of what one believes in, death is certain and it is indeed the greatest miracle of nature or Maya that we live most of our life unmindful of this fact. People go around knowing this fact in theory, but in practice, they live like death will not touch them. An Aghori tries to live with dispassion towards life by ensuring that he constantly remembers the inevitable end. The mind then instead seeks that which is changeless and permanent. This indeed inspires their practices. The meditation on the dead body, cannibalism and other such extreme rituals are in a way symbolic reminders of death and its nature. Remaining calm and indifferent while embracing repulsiveness shows the level of detachment with senses that the human mind is capable of. Another aspect of the philosophy is that it completely transposes the opposites of purity with pollution and morality with immorality in an effort to fully subdue the ego and to transcend even the cosmic order. This form of worship takes many forms ranging from the most complex purification and visualization techniques to the most extreme sexual and potentially polluting practices. The Aghori of the Kinaram lineage emphatically state that the term does not refer to a particular group or religion. Instead, they assert that Aghor is a spiritual state of non-discrimination that is free of hatred, fear and aversion to anyone or anything. There is no evil. Everything emanates from Brahman. So how could anything in this universe be impure? This is the kind of philosophy the Aghoris follow. According to them, everything is the manifestation of God itself. So everything is pure. So abandoning anything is like abandoning God itself. Sadhana, which means spiritual path, refers to all practices, ceremonies and austerities that are carried out consistently and deliberately in order to achieve moksha. It is a mental act of amplification and purification that results in self-realization. The Aghori sadhana varies in that it doesn't seem pious or spiritual. Instead, the reverse is true. The Aghoris, who live on cremation grounds, smear their bodies with ash, eat decayed flesh, plucked off corpses waiting to be cremated, wear long matted hair and consume their own feces, pee and vomit, imitating their ancestors. Even though their fascination with the dead body appears unethical, from their perspective, they perceive Brahman in everything. They train themselves to feel at ease while meditating even in the most revolting circumstances. Many Aghoris walk around naked, symbolizing the genuine human form and the separation from mortals, who in their view exist in the world of illusion. They are able to transcend human emotions like love, anger, 
envy and pride by doing this. They hold that a true Aghori should sever all links with their families, friends and all material things, spend their entire lives at the crematory and only eat and drink from human skulls. In addition, they use physical rituals and techniques to stimulate the body's energy centers. The five substances, known as the Panchamakars, also known as the five M-words, are employed in Aghori Tantric practice and are thought to increase the amount of energy in the body's power centers. These are Madhya or wine, Matsya or fish, Mans or meat, Mudra or parched grain and Methun or sex. While becoming enlightened and one with the ultimate is the ultimate goal of rituals, one might also acquire tremendous natural powers by engaging in them. Numerous tales of Aghori sadhus performing miracles, superhuman feats and even healing have appeared in Indian folklore. These ceremonies are frequently rejected by society because they are seen as extremely dangerous. Because of this, Aghori practices are highly esoteric and confidential in nature and only a highly knowledgeable teacher can impart them. Vamatantra and Aghor Sadhana focus primarily on breaking taboos and transgressing norms. This idea has become the mainstream explanation for why some sadhanas are performed, yet it is often exaggerated and frequently leads to the condemnation of the practices as immoral. These opinions are primarily those of a non-initiate who gives these activities a banal and shallow interpretation. True sadhaks are not concerned in the slightest about social norms or taboos. The spectator could only generate judgments that were consistent with the values that were understood in their consensus reality approach without awareness of the complex inner dynamics of the tantrics. The sole rational explanation for crazy and taboo-breaking acts is thus provided to the public rather than the intricate process being understood. From the practitioner's viewpoint, this would be a relatively unimportant interpretation. There have been those who entered this route because of an attraction to the exotic, only to ruin everything for themselves. However, it is also true that spiritual corruption is not a luxury reserved only for Aghoris. Every path has its risks. In truth, the Aghor path is not about black magic or engaging in immoral behavior. The objective is to become enlightened, knowledgeable and one with Brahman, the supreme reality. The majority of customs and rituals are purely symbolic in nature and represent the philosophy of remaining unaffected even when under extreme discomfort. Additionally, it would be nearly impossible to gather bodies and other items for the rites. Some Aghor members even own homes and enjoy quite ordinary lives. The traditional path of Aghor has been modernized in order to strike a balance between extreme radical rituals and social acceptability while preserving the underlying intellectual premise. Aghori behavior transcends morality. The joint efforts of society have led to the development of morality as a normative concept. Aghoris desire to live without the restrictions of society, hence they are by definition not subject to its rules. The lifestyle of an Aghori may very well overlap with what is considered ethically or legally acceptable because social standards and even our laws have developed from universal moral intuitions. Furthermore, from the perspective of an Aghori, human minds simply categorize actions into good, bad, moral and immoral categories. In nature, there is no such classification. Nothing is intrinsically good or terrible. Everything is merely there. Even death is not awful, nor is a lion killing a deer or a natural disaster like an earthquake or flood. Everything simply serves its intended purpose as a component of the ultimate. Despite leading such an odd and bizarre lifestyle that includes cannibalism, immorality, ribaldry and scrupulous behavior, they are nonetheless regarded as beings who are able to overcome all obstacles to attain the highest state. 
Aghoris believe that in order to see the illuminating light of God, one must first accept what is real and pass through the world of darkness. They don't intend to hurt anyone else when engaging in such a lifestyle. It's just the mindset with which they approach life and all of its possibilities. When we examine society's reality, we discover a number of injustices and inequalities. A few examples are the wealth disparity, discrimination based on caste, class, gender and sexual orientation, the loss of respect and dignity for a group of people, various forms of deprivation, etc. The power of death as a shared human experience that eliminates socio-economic disparities is reflected in the cremation grounds. In the Shamshan, everyone burns in the same manner. There is equality. No matter what caste, class or gender a person belongs to, they are welcome at the Aghor sect. All they require is a resolute attitude and an inspiring teacher to lead the student. This was one of the factors contributing to Aghori's widespread acceptance and even veneration by the ordinary community, despite their perception by upper caste individuals as filthy or tamasic. Worship, sacrifices to the goddess, and rituals that call for a partner in order to advance spiritually together give women and the feminine force of nature more significance. Aghoris subsist on leftovers and gifts. The ceremonies can be carried out by anyone, regardless of wealth. Because of this, the cult of Aghor questions the traditional ideas of caste, class and gender inequity through its ideology. It prepared the path for social reform that has been inspired by spiritual principles as opposed to legal ones. Aghori tries to emulate Lord Shiva, the ultimate, the divine, through his unorthodox and radical practices. As the Ganges fans from heaven to earth through the matted locks of Shiva, the Aghori makes water miraculously flow from his hair. Like Shiva, who ingested the poison which emerged from the churning of the oceans and thereby allowed creation to proceed, the Aghori is a swallower of poison who liberates the blocked-up fertility of a woman. He shares many traits with his idol, like being a master of evil spirits and being touched with insanity. He adorns his body with the ornaments of Shiva and is acknowledged to be Shiva. The Aghori transforms into the Lord of Forgetfulness during the Chakra Puja ritual, holding his companion in a deathless hug. The skull he carries associates him with Shiva's terrifying manifestation, Bhairav. His familiars are dogs, which are scavengers of the crematory like the Aghori. There's no denying that the stakes for falling short on Aghor's route are significantly higher. It is not meant for the masses and can never be mainstreamed. Those who accept life as it is without passing judgment are the true Aghoris. They become habituated to things that most people would consider immoral, revolting and evil. With the idea of non-rejection rather than with compassion, they make friends with the dark, the mystical, the awful and the magical. Experiencing life the way it is and not being driven by good or spurned by bad is what makes them revolt against the moral orthodoxy that pertains throughout society. Oh